This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. With the today's session that you're going to learn basic introduction to essays. Okay. I'm going to explain SAS functions, functionality of essays. In fact, end-to-end -end job of SAS programmer. End-to-end -end job of SAS programmer. What exactly they do, their role. So then you're going to learn basic SAS program. Simple SAS program. I'm going to write a program okay, to analyze the data. Simple program. I'll just make you understand how SAS program works. Then you're going to learn at the end. We are learning SAS clinical. So what is the role of this essays in the clinical trial process? How we are going to use? What is the importance? So let us see the basic introduction. Initially, uh, before 1960s, there was no tool, there was no system, there was no computer system, there was no tool to implement the statistical um, formulas, to implement the statistical programs, statistical uh, test. So in 1960s, North Carolina University, North Carolina University developed essays. So they developed essays. Initially, they worked on the agriculture data. Initially, they worked on agriculture data. SAS is used in agriculture data analysis. Initially, it was used in agriculture domain. Later, it has expanded into many domains. Later, it has expanded into many domains. So SAS now is multi-layered. SAS now is multi-layered. Why multi-layered? Initially, it was used in agriculture data, but SAS is expanded into many sectors. Now SAS is used in multiple sectors. SAS is used in clinical, healthcare. It is used in banking, finance, oil industry, government use this, forecasting we use, for forecast, forecasting also we use essays. So SAS is used in multiple sectors. That's the reason it is called multi-layered. In 1960, North Carolina University developed essays. Okay, so it is multi-layered as it is used in multiple sectors. It is also called multi-database architecture. Also called multi-database architecture. multi database architecture. Okay. It is used, it is, it will be connected to multiple databases. So as we are calling, uh, as we are connecting to multiple databases, we are calling it as multi database architecture. It can connect to multiple databases. Why do we need to connect to multiple DBs? Let's say when you are getting the data, generally you will be getting data from client. When you are working in the SaaS teams, you will be getting your data from the clients. Your client will be the pharmaceutical companies. So you are getting your data from the client when you are getting the data from the client, your data may be in Excel, 
your data may be in access your data may be in other databases also your data may be in other databases also okay it can be in oracle it can be in terabase it can be in many multiple databases So SAS is called multiple databases. SAS is to retrieve the data from those databases. Simple example. So I have data on Excel. SAS has to read this data into SAS environment, into here, into SAS data sets, SAS format. That's the reason SAS has to connect to Excel, then retrieve the data from the Excel. That's the reason it is called multi-database architecture. It is also called, so one is multi-database architecture. It is also called multi-vendor architecture. It can be used on multiple platforms. Now I'm using on Windows. Now I'm using SAS on Windows. See, this is my window system. This is my window system. So SAS can be used on Linux. It can be used on Unix. It can be used on Windows. It can be used on many other platforms. So it is platform independent and vendor neutral. It is platform independent and vendor neutral. That means it can be used by multiple vendors. It can be installed. It can be used on multiple platforms. That's the reason multi-vendor architecture. It is also called multi functional. It is also called multi-function. Multi-function. It has many functions. SAS has many applications. SAS not only for the analysis. See statistical. SAS stands for statistical analysis systems. Statistical analysis systems. Okay, so it is not only used for the analysis, it can be used for the manipulations. It can be used for the manipulation analysis, it can be used for many other purpose, many other applications. Interchange of data, integration of data, business intelligence, artificial intelligence. So it has many applications, out of which we are going to use four main functions. So this is called SAS functionality. It is four main functions, it's SAS functionality. One is data access. Data management data analysis data representation Access is nothing but just now what we discussed. If your data is in multiple other files, external files, external databases, it has to read. It has to retrieve. 
data access is nothing but reading the source data. Reading the source data. Retrieving the data. Data access, read the source data. Retrieve the data from external databases. Read the source data from the external databases. Okay. So it will read. This is raw data. Whatever the data that you are reading, it is raw data. So it is to read the data from the external databases and create a new SAS data set. New SAS data set. What does it mean? So your data set in the form of table. What is SAS data set? In the form of table. It is collection of rows and columns. SAS data set is collection of rows and columns. Okay. So once you read your data, I'll show you our data set example. You can see here DM I have. DM means demographic data. EX, we have exposure data. You can see. This is data. Rows and columns, you see. So we have rows and we have columns. So each column is called, each column, this is column, this is one column. Each column is called, in SAS terminology, it is called variable. Ultimately, you should have your data in this format. Ultimately, you should have your data in this format. So collection of rows and columns. Collection of rows and columns. Columns are called variable, rows are called observations. This is SAS terminology. Table is called data set. Columns are called variables, rows are called observations. Ultimately, when you want to analyze data, your data must be in the format of SAS data set. This is SAS data set. You can easily observe. There is a small squared box, red color printed, red color ball printed on the box. So this is what the data access. Access is nothing but reading the data, reading the source data, raw data from the given files, external files. Most of the times you'll get the data in other external files only. It can be Excel, it can be access, it can be, in fact, other databases also. The SAS programmer has to first read the data into SAS environment. We must have the data in this format. So once you read the data in this format, then we need to manage it. Need to manage. What do you mean by manage? Manipulate the data. Manipulate data. Shape the data, nothing but. So in whichever the way that you want to mold your data, you can mold. In whichever the way that you want to manipulate the data, you can do. So it is to manipulate the data, mold the data, shape the data.
Okay, so we can add the new data. We can select the existing data. We can add the new data. We can select the existing data. We can modify the data. We can delete the data. Okay, so in whichever the way that you want to manipulate, you can manipulate. Then why to manipulate? Let's see. SAS main role is to analyze. What do you mean by analysis? When you have a raw data, making it simple, making it meaningful data. When you have a random raw data, making it meaningful data. When you have a complex data, making it conclusive to the point, nothing but. But you see, I have a raw data here. When you are reading the data, I have 1,000 rows, 100 variables, columns. A thousand rows, hundred columns. But I don't require that entire data. I don't require the entire data in the analysis. Analysis, I just require only hundred observations, five columns. That's all. Hundred rows, five columns. So to my presentation. To my analysis, I just require only this much of data. But I have a lot of data. I don't require all this data. What do you need to do? You need to manipulate the data. Select the required data. You can select the required data. That many number of rows, that many number of columns. You can easily retrieve the data from the raw data. We can easily select. So we have a lot of manipulation techniques. In SAS, we have a lot of manipulation techniques. While reading also, while accessing data also, we have a lot of techniques, a lot of processes, statements, a lot of methods. So once you get your required data, Management is nothing but getting the data which is required for the analysis. Because you may not use all your data in the analysis point. The selecting data required for the analysis. What do you mean by analysis? When you have a raw data, making it meaningful data. When you have a huge data, making it complex. When you have a complex data, making it conclusive data. Now it is simplified. When you have a lot of data, we need to simplify the data. When you have a complex data, generally uh, clinical trial data will be complex, huge data. We need to make it simplify, conclusive, interpretative data. Interpretative data. Okay, right. So this is what your analysis. Analysis will be in the form of tables, listing figures. Ultimately, SAS program has to generate. Ultimately, SAS programmer has to generate tables, listings, figures. So let's say I'm generating meaningful report. For my data, I'm generating meaningful report. 
So this report is in fast format, but you cannot submit this SaaS format to the client because they may have SaaS software, they may not have SaaS software. They may have, they may not have. So what you need to do, you need to make your data easily available to the end user. Easily available to end user. So your data is in format of essays. Your data is in SAS format. When you're directly submitting this table listing uh, figure, if it is in SAS format, if you're directly sending it to end user, end user may not be able to read your data, isn't it? Simple. Can you open Excel without having software, MS Office? We cannot. It will show you as unknown file. SAS also same thing. I have SAS software. You can see these files are in SAS format. This is SAS format. See, this is SAS format. These are all SAS format. See, SAS data sets, SAS program files. Because I have it SAS software, that's the reason I'm able to read SAS files. So when you're submitting it to end user, they may have, they may not have. Most of the times they will not have. Will they be able to open the file? No. So as a SAS programmer, it is your job. As a SAS programmer, it's your role is to make it make the data available to end user <clears throat> make the data available to end user make the data available to end user. By creating the data in PDF, RTF, HTML, XML files. So I can easily read the PDF. I can easily read the RTF. I can easily read the HTML. When you open HTML, it will be open in the Internet Explorer like this. This is PDF. See, this is PDF. HTML also can be open like this web link. HTML also can be open as a web link. Okay. So this is what your end-to-end -end job, end-to-end -end role of the SAS programmer right from accessing the data from the external sources till representing the data in the machine readable files. Why machine readable files? These are machine readable files because these files can be opened in any software, any platform you can open them without having any software. So this is SAS function. Let us see the SAS program. I'm going to give you a good example so that you will be able to understand the complete SAS business workflow, how they retrieve the data and how they create the data, how they analyze the data, how they present the data. Before we go further, <clears throat> what is a SAS program? 
SAS is the programming language. SAS is not the database, it is the programming language. Initially, it was only the software, but now it is a company and it is a software. Program is nothing but collection of statements. Collection of statements, a group of statements. Program is nothing but collection of statements, group of statements. So in SAS, each and every statement, each and every statement ends with semicolon. In SAS, each and every statement end with semicolon. Okay. And we have three windows to work with the program. Editor window, log window, output window. Editor, log, output. So what is editor window? Editor is to create the program, edit the program, and submit the program. Editor is to create, edit, and submit. Log is to see the comments, not only comments, errors. It In overall, it will write a comment on your program. Warnings, notes, syntax. Errors will be in the red color, warnings will be in the green color, Notes will be in the red color. Syntax will be in the black color. You can see. Errors red. Notes blue. Syntax black. Warnings green. Warnings green. So each and every comment that you can check in the log window. So these three are the programming windows. Editor is to write the code, write the program. Log is to see the errors. Output is to display the result. Your result will be displayed in the output. The result will be displayed in output. Let me give you one example. So let's say SAS role is to create meaningful report, isn't it? Simplify the data. Proper information, nothing but. This requires two steps. Directly, we cannot work on the raw data. When you have a raw data, SAS role is to create a, a report. But we cannot directly work on the raw data. When raw data is given, first you need to create a SAS data set. When SAS data set is created, then we can play around the data. We can generate the report. So data block is used to create a data set. Proc block is to generate the report. In SAS program, you have two fundamental blocks. In SAS program, we have two fundamental blocks. SAS program, we have two fundamental blocks. Data block and prop block. Data and proc. 
So data is to create a data set. A NIS has program that you take. You'll have two blocks, data block, prop block. data block, prop block. So data is to create a data set. Data step, data block will start with the data and with run statement. It is to read the data, retrieve the data. Finally, create a data set. Finally, create a data set. Proc is to produce a result. Proc is to produce a result. Okay. Proc to analyze. Proc to analyze the data. Proc to represent the data. The so proc is to analyze, proc is to process, proc is to generate the result. Analyze, process, generate the result. Okay, so let me give you the example now. <clears throat> I have a raw data from the client. From the client is giving me the raw data on drug side effects, drug details, adverse effect details. Side effects are nothing but adverse effects. Side effects are nothing but adverse effects. Your raw data is on adverse effects. Your task is to generate a report. They're giving you the data and at the same time they're they're giving you the data at the same time they're asking you to generate a report on how many adverse events are serious. How many are not serious? How many are serious? How many are non serious? How many are serious? How many are non serious? I just want ultimately get the count report on count count of how many are serious how many are non serious so let me write the data patient id drug adverse events seriousness id 5mg fever which is non serious. 101, 10 mg, rash, non serious. 102, 15 mg, vomit, stroke. I'll write the stroke here. Stroke. Generally, we'll have not this simple, we have lengthy data. You see. Will be having data like this. I'm just taking the simple one. Stroke serious. 103, increasing it to 20 mg. Blood vomit. Serious. 104, 5 mg back. 
back to five mg non-seamless. So this is the data given. What is the first step here? This is raw data I have. Whenever you have a raw data, SAS has to read the data with the help of data block. Then create a SAS data set. Create SAS data set. Okay, let me create a data set. Data, data block is used to create a data set. You can see the first step. Whenever you have raw data, data block will help you to create a SAS data set. So data block will start with the keyword data and with run data, treatment data, input. So this will create empty data set. Data will start with the keyword data, end with run. Data will start with the keyword data, end with run. You can run this. See, data treatment is created, but we cannot open this one because no data in it, data is not there. Input is to declare the, input statement is to declare the columns. What are the columns here? PTID is the column, drug is the column, AE is the column, SCR is the column. We have data lines. Input is to declare the variables columns, data lines to declare the observations. Data lines to declare the observations. Rows. So in the data set, mainly we have rows and columns. To declare the rows, we use data line statement. Each statement end with semicolon. In SAS, each and every statement end with semicolon. Okay, but no need to end these observations with semicolon. No need to end observations with semicolon. So each and every statement end with semicolon. Data will assign the data set name. Input will declare the variables. Cards or data lines. Either cards or data lines to declare the observations. To declare the observations. Okay, so give me one second. So I have data block. I just created data set here. You can see here. So run 
select and run. Now you can see, I'll just delete this one. Again, run. I'm going to execute this program. So this complete your data block. Executing here, you can see there is a, a running man symbol in the toolbar. Or you can go to run, submit. See, treatment is created. Drug AE, severity not reading. Only PID is reading because drug is character variable. AE, adverse event is character variable. Severity, seriousness also character variable. We have letters right here. So this consists of only numbers. In SAS, character variables will read with dollar. Character variables read with dollar. Okay, drug dollar, AE dollar, seriousness dollar. Runs. See? Drug, AE, seriousness. So we have numeric character. Always character variables will add dollar. Dollar represent character. Okay, so I'm going to use the prop block. Proc is to process the data, produce the result, analyze the data. Actual analysis will be done with the proc only. I'm just using proc print. Proc print. Don't worry about the terminology. Proc means processor. Print means it will just print the data. That's all. We'll elaborate later on this. See? Previously, it was not showing error. So it was not showing the output. Now it is giving the output because we used PROC. With the data, you will not get the output. If you are using PROC, you will be getting the output. PROC print, data equals to data set name. PROC print, data equals to data set name. So I'm not using print because my task is just not to print the data. Task is given. I have to generate a report on the count. For that, I'll use frequency. Like this, we have a lot of analysis reporting programs. Lot of analysis reporting programs. Let's say proc means to get the average, proc print to get the print, proc tabulate, proc report. Proc G chat, Proc G plot. Lot of procedures that you have in order to analyze and produce a results. So Proc frequency will give you the count. Count of what? I just want to get the table for the seriousness. SCR is the variable name that I already de declared in the data set. SCR is the Variable name, which we already declared in the data set. If you can just run this one, it will generate a table, a report on how many number of serious cases are there, how many number of non-serious adverse events are there. Total three, non-serious, two, serious. Clear it. Let me show you G chart. I would like to generate the graph. That to pi 3D. Pi graph, 3D graph. See? Red portion, serious. Blue portion, non serious. I can easily rep represent in the figure graph form. It's a table listing figure. So this is figure, table, listing. Just list the data, frequency, table, and frequency, graph. So this is what you are 
program. Every program will have two blocks, data block, prop block. Data will create the data set. Prop will produce the, generate the result. Now, how the SAS is going to be used in the clinical trial process? SAS can be used in many sectors. One of the domain is clinical. So you need to know clinical trial first. Clinical trial is nothing but testing the drug on human beings. testing the drug on human beings. Before they test the drug on human beings, the drug should be tested on animals because whenever pharma companies mark, uh, develop the product, they will not directly market the product. First, they start conducting the clinical trial, preclinical trials. Before they start clinical trial, they will test the drug on animals. It is called preclinical trials. Animal testing on animal body. Okay. So it is to study pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, toxicology. Pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and toxicology. After completion of this preclinical data, after completion of this preclinical trial, we should get approval from the regulatory bodies. So this approval is called investigational approval. In order to get this approval, we have to submit all the way this preclinical data. So once we get approval, then we start conducting the clinical trials. So clinical trials main objective is safety and efficacy of the new drug. Phase one, phase two, phase three. So phase one, phase two, phase three, after completion of three, again, we should get approval from where? Regulatory authorities. This approval is called marketing approval. In order to get this approval, we should submit preclinical data and clinical trial data. Both the data will be part of this one, applications. Then, after completion of this approval, once we get approval, the drug will be marketed. So this is the complete process of your clinical trial. First preclinical, then approval, then clinical, then approval, then marketing. So right from the preclinical till approval process, marketing approval, ultimately, Sponsor should submit. Sponsor means pharma companies. Data to regulatory authorities. Why? In order to get the approvals. Okay, sponsor should submit data to approval. But this data, they cannot submit directly. Because the data is raw data data is huge data and complex data data not in the standard format not in the standard format as it is required by the fda regulatory authorities as required by the regulatory bodies so sas will work on this data sas has to make the data simple it has to 
uh, analyze the data, represent the data. They have to follow all the standard formats, then submit to regulatory authorities. So that we are going to learn in clinical SAS. These standards that we are going to follow is CDISC, Clinical Data Interchange Standard Consortium. Clinical Data Interchange Standard Consortium. Okay. So we are going to learn the base SAS, basic programming, then advanced SAS. This will take approximately 40 to 45 classes, hours. Clinical SAS will take 35 hours. Here we are going to learn the C disk, SDTM, ADAM. How to create analysis data sets, how to create submission data set, how to create the TLS. So this are all will be covered on two projects. These concepts will be covered on two projects. We are going to do two projects. Okay, so this is clinical science approximately will take 35 hours. So this is the curriculum and duration project. Notes will be given. Notes will be given. Mock interview will be conducted. Interview questions will be given. Resume preparation done. Assignments will be given. Assessments will be conducted. Notes. Okay, all these assessments, assignments. So resume preparation, notes, mock interviews, interview questions, and mock uh, dumps will be given for the certification. Certification dumps will be given. So this is the feature. These are the features of the course curriculum. And now you understand where exactly we use essays in the clinical trial process as ultimately we have to submit data. Clinical trial, whether the result is positive result or negative result, we have to go for the analysis. Whether it is successful clinical trial or failure clinical trial. How come you know whether it is successful or a failure? By analyzing data. So, SAS is most useful in the clinical trial domain. We have competitors also. Other, uh, other programming languages also will be there, but SAS is most commonly used. SAS is most commonly used. Any questions I have done with my demo? 